Welcome back to another episode of Project Management for Small Business. I'm your host, Anthony Pavlich. We've been off for a couple weeks, and we're starting back today with a great interview with John Goldschmidt. John graduated from the University of Pennsylvania School of Engineering, and he spent his first part of his career working in the field of finance and financial technology in New York City. But after several years, John transitioned into the startup world, first working on his own music streaming platform and then working in business development for a fine tech startup based in Denver, Colorado. Now, after accumulating eight years of experience in business and product development for early stage companies, he's currently the co-founder of the HR tech startup ClickIt, where he's responsible for developing the product and expanding market opportunities. Okay, John, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Anthony. I appreciate it. So we're gonna get started with just giving me a background about your business, ClickIt. Tell me how you got started and what, and what it is for our listeners. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, thanks again for having me. Uh, yeah, I'd be glad to tell you more. It's been a, it's been a bit of a journey. And um, the company actually started about five or six years ago. What we've been doing, and, and we still have this business, but it's a, a service where we uh, uh, actually gather feedback from the from hotel guests on behalf of managers and owners of hotels. And that, that's, again, the kind of, we call it the legacy business. And the, the key to it is that we gather the feedback in a way that's very natural and just involves one or two questions. So as opposed to normally when you leave a hotel, you might get a survey. And I think the stat is only about 6% of people who receive those surveys fill them out. And but what we do is we collect a little bit of just like a, a question or two through the wireless network while the guest is on site. It's it's a very effective uh, product, but what we discovered is that it's not uh, it's not extremely scalable because we need to be embedded in networks. Um, the market actually isn't huge for for these for the the hotels that need this product. Uh, if you think about it, most hotels out there are the Marriotts and the, the IGGs of the world, and um, this isn't something that you know getting this kind of pulse feedback isn't quite as valuable to them. And also they're still very price sensitive. So we were thinking about this concept of gathering feedback on a very, um, uh, in a very natural way. And we were looking around, I actually, we were talking to some folks in the HR space, looking at the landscape and discovered that there's a huge, uh, there's a big need for, um, to retain employees in blue collar workplaces, uh, given the way that the, that the, you know, given the way that unemployment is, the way that the, um, workforce is heading and um, certain other factors and and so we took this concept this product that we had built and we applied it to a slightly different uh, market so instead of facing guests and, and, and customers and hotels we're facing employees in places like warehouses and distribution centers and factories um, and a lot of places we can expand from there to kind of these the frontline hourly workforce um, so that's been kind of our journey and we came to market with this product about a year ago and, and yeah, it's been, uh, it's actually been quite, uh, you know, we've learned quite a lot and, uh, you know, when it comes to building out the product, we still have a lot to learn, but that's kind of the nature of, of, uh, building a product, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Everything as time goes on, everything, everything morphs into something new. I mean, you, you start finding out information and then you find out that you can get, you can get more information and, when your customers get some information, they're like, well, we want something different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what are you, what are you doing with the information? What are you doing with the, uh, the results that you get? Yeah, so we would, you know, the thing about it is, so there's a, the Society for Human Resources Management is the big, um, the, the large organization that in the HR space, they have a stat that says that 92% of organizations don't have the data they need to lead their organizations effectively. Um, you know, I believe that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so what we're doing is giving decision makers the, the ability to, um, make decisions for their human resources, make, make decisions with, you know, that, that affect their personnel in a way that, um, is thoughtful and, and it all actually involves those people. So what we do is have a, have a methodology that gathers data, gathers information from people in an engaging way. And we gather it not just from your facility, if you're the general manager of the facility, not just from your facility, but from the facility of your peers at other locations, 
and also from uh, competitors in those locations. So now we can start benchmarking the way that you're doing across various data points with how your, um, you know, w with the landscape in general. So it's much more valuable to be able to see information uh, across the board rather than just in the vacuum or the bubble of your, you know, your facility. So that's kind of, that's a high level what we're doing with the data. So what kind of questions are you, what kind of questions are you asking? Well, it's, it's, it's very simple. You know, we, we get a bit of sentiment. We have a couple different questions that we ask that, that all get at the same thing in, in, in different ways. These are benchmarking questions like how just for everything from um, starts out with everything. How are you feeling today to get a little bit more specific about the, about the location? We might say, would you recommend working at X, Y, and Z, you know, and, uh, um, but then we also get a little bit of sentiment or a little bit of information about why they feel that way. And, and then we can correlate when somebody is happy or satisfied, this is why they usually feel that way. And if they're not satisfied, this is why they feel that way. So then we, we kind of, we have this methodology where we drill in a little bit more, you know, it, it, the result is something that's very actionable and, and gives, gives human resources managers, general managers, you know, head of operations at these, at these large organizations, the opportunity to make informed decisions. Do you follow up with the organizations after you give them the data, after you work with them to see if what they've implemented and if what the information that you've supplied has worked? And help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's part of the that's definitely part of the product is they, they want to decision makers want one of the valuable things is not just kind of saying, OK, here's what we learned. All right. You're on your own. You know, nobody wants to. One of the keys in HR, as you're probably familiar, is when you learn something or when somebody tells you that um, or when, when, when the a company says they're going to do something, they have to do it. You know, or else, or else that just, it's almost, it almost makes the problem even worse or, or it creates problems. Yeah. Cause I've been in a lot of organizations like that, that they've, I've mm -hmm. seen surveys, I've, I've filled them out, but you don't, a lot of times you don't see anything that actually comes from them. You don't see actions. Yeah. So we, we actually, when we approach customers and, and when we're, I don't want to say that we're, that we're picky on who we, you know, who, who we'll work with or anything. <laughs> Well, a good customer, you know, a customer is a customer, but we don't want to take on a customer who doesn't intend to improve, you know, or doesn't have people in place. And I guess by nature, the folks who we're talking to are ones who are trying to improve their workplace. So, you know, you wouldn't want somebody to come in and just think that that they're going to get the data and then, and then walk away and everything is going to be solved. You know, that everybody kind of understands that, what, that there's going to have to be some follow up here. And actually, the nature of our of of, of my job and, and what we're trying to build is to make that follow up and and the in the next steps uh, kind of as as seamless and, and effortless for our customers as possible. That's good because uh, yeah, I've I've actually been involved in creation of employee satisfaction surveys. One of the major things that we discussed when we were creating it with the owners and the managers is that you need to make sure that you actually. I think have transparency with the employees that this is the feedback that you've received. These are the action items you're going to take so that you, they hold themselves accountable. Otherwise the employees, they're not going to have any faith that anything's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then a lot exactly. of, a lot of employees get to, if, if they don't, they get to the feeling of why am I filling this out? Nothing's going to happen. Exactly. And then your response rate drops. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of what we do is, uh, you know, kind of some of our secret sauce is around that follow up and, um, and doing things that keep employees engaged. So, and that's good. Yeah. 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 So what kind of things, when you started out, I, you've, you've obviously changed your direction with the software, realizing that you weren't going to be able to take the initial purpose very far. What kind of things did you do in the beginning to compared to where you're at now that didn't work and that helped you change direction? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll tell you what, I mean, a lot of the discovery was, <laughs> a lot of the discovery was, was, um, pushing on different doors, you know, um, metaphorically, uh, you know, trying, talk, having conversations, throwing out actually, you know, when we'd get in front of somebody in front of a decision maker and would start talking about our product, uh, throwing, even throwing out pricing and seeing what, you know, seeing 
the, the look on people's faces. And then that was one of the things that realized what that made us realize that like, even when you're talking, for example, in the hotel space to a Marriott, they're very price sensitive. They have operating expenses that they don't want to inflate. You know, so part of it is, is realizing that, that there's a product fit, there's a product market fit, but then you also have to take pricing into consideration. So a lot of it is just kind of recognizing patterns, asking the right questions, listening, and, and recognizing the patterns that exist and, and, and seeing like kind of how far you can go into the market or, in, or you know, or, or with, with the pricing. Where do you see it going next? Do you have a, a goal or mm-hmm. what you'd like to see this turn into? I mean, you know, ultimately I think we, we, we want to, we're thinking, you know, you always want to think about them as, as big of a market as you can and, and think about the product having as much impact as, uh, as it can. And, and the way that we think about it is we're, cha- we're, we're fundamentally changing the way that these blue collar workplaces work, you know, operate for their employees. If you think about a lot of these environments, the turnover is so high because communications in those environments are the same that they've been for hundreds of years. There's, there's a, a lack of, I think a lot of times um, there's a lack of understanding of one another. There's a lack of, you know, there's a lack of really uh, um, being able to express uh, one's voice, uh, which is much harder when you're not sitting, you know, you're not stationary, you're not sitting at a desk, you don't have an email address. So what we think about is that's actually, that actually comes down to half of the U S workforce. I mean, we like to think that, that we like to think that everybody, we don't like to think it, but you know, we we tend, if you, if you work in an office, you tend to think that everybody in this country is like you, you know, and sitting at a desk and at a computer. But it's like, the fact is that half of this country is not doing that. It's funny that you said that because I was just thinking that when you were going through that is that half of the blue collar workers or more, they don't have email addresses. Right. So when you said communication has been the same, it's like a lot of times they don't always get all the information because they're, they're, they're not in front of a computer. They're out doing work yeah. and they don't have a way to find out what's going on. And people up top sometimes forget that they were like, Oh, well, I've sent out an email. Everybody should know what's going on. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you know, you have personal, of course, everybody has a personal email, but it's not always used email and text message and even, even phone aren't always used for, um, you know, for, for work purposes. Uh, And a lot of work people don't want to, they don't want their personal email diluted with work work stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So what, what made you so, passionate or so what was your desire to get involved with this type this this market the mm. um, employee retention and engagement yeah i mean uh good question we we saw a natural like i said before I and mean, we saw kind of a natural fit with we saw a trend in the hr space that was going more towards pulse surveys um so that this the, you know the thing that i described where where it goes from asking a whole bunch of questions um, and getting people in survey mode and really not getting a high response rate to um, asking in one or two questions um, on a more regular basis. And there's a, there's a trend in the HR space and that, that looks a lot like kind of what we're doing in the, in the hospitality space, right? So there's that and then you combine it with, with um, in, in like the natural form of communication and, and you combine that with some conversations we had when we were talking to some big fortune 500 companies saying, you know, that they have a lot of turnover in their, in their blue collar, more, more specifically in kind of their, their blue collar setting. And we thought, you know, this is kind of a, an interesting fit for our product and in this market. So, you know, we started exploring that and, and uh, we've had some, we've had a lot of early success. So um, it just kind of, I, I think this goes back to, understanding and recognizing product market fit and, under, and knowing the difference between one or two people who like something and, and having a, having a real market full of people who, um, you know, who, who are willing to pay for what you're mm. offering. So how are you engaging them? If they, I mean, they don't have email. So if they're not sitting at mm. their desk, they're not have a computer in front of them, how are you getting their responses? Um, yeah, we have, we have a, uh, a there, there are two ways actually we have a, um, a piece of hardware that that is uh, that's implemented in uh, you know that we actually uh, install. It's not really an installation as much as just a. It, it, it's posted. We have a piece of hardware that's posted in places like the break rooms and 
you know, wherever entrances, exits, wherever the employees tend to spend time um, on the, on the floor or the shop floor. And it and basically it's something that they walk by all the time and it's a dynamic um, screen, you know, so it, it, it presents information, it gathers it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a piece of hardware. Yeah. Long story short. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great, actually. Sure. So how do you keep all your, oh, over time, how do you keep all the, uh, your projects in order? I know, especially when you're switching over, that's a big project to take on and pivot and change, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. total 180 and take a different direction with it. Yeah, um, good question. We, I'll tell you what, we, um, the, the, the majority of the organization behind uh, what we're building is, is, in, is in, in JIRA. Um, and that's much more, as you know, much more focused on kind of technical, the technical side of things. And so most of our kind of product management was taking place, was being led from, you know, the, the tech team. Actually, when we moved into this, when we moved into this new product, it's, and the reason for that is because there wasn't really, I don't want to say there wasn't a stakeholder, but there wasn't like an administrator on the customer side who really had to interact with our platform. So any developments that were taking place were, were technical developments and been more for the functionality on the back end. But as we as we built into this, you know, had had enterprise customers and, and administrators who were looking at data and things like that, we've had to spend a lot more time thinking about the product, which you know, at this point is. Uh, it gets more and more complicated every day. So, <laughs> um, you know, as we gather more customers, gather more information on what we need to build and what's next, um, we have to put more and more processes in place. And, you know, truth be told, it's still relatively small, but um, we're, we're just, so we're starting out with, um, you know, starting out with just Trello boards and, um, the, and, and really it's, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about what the priorities are and then um, right now it's, you know, let's say right now it's data visualization. Tomorrow it might be um, user experience. But we're, we're thinking about kind of, um, we're taking it one step at a time and just taking on what we can and, and just very simply trying to tie together like the Trello board with the Jira and, and make sure that both teams are in sync. So nothing too complicated actually, but um, it's, it's going to be, getting more complicated as we go. That's for sure. Yeah. Have you, I've actually, I've used both Jira and I use Trello right now. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's you, there's a lot of different options out there. You just have to kind of find what works for you. Yep. I think it's actually what you're doing is very valuable for the, a lot of the industries because I've, especially with the follow up portion of it, mm -hmm. because too many times, like I said, when we were talking earlier that there's not a follow up after the survey. Mm. I think it's important to ensure that um, what the management says they are going to do that they that they do. Uh -huh. uh, that's the only way they're going to keep employees, especially with constant changes in the workplace. For sure. Yeah. And now, and generations change, and they they get the turnover of retirees. They're they're going to lose a lot of of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now a, a lot a lot of uh, you know intellectual capital and stuff that people have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One more question and then we'll, we'll, we'll close out here. What is like a piece of advice that you would give to people that are starting out as you, when you started out with this new business, uh, if you had to give a piece of advice or some kind of resource that they could, that would help, mm. what would be the number one that you've used or that you found useful for yourself? Huh. That's like, wow. Um, should have known this was coming. <laughs> um, oh man. I guess, I guess the thing is, um, yeah, the, the, the thing that I always come back to knowing, knowing when something like the ability to understand when something isn't working, um, the ability to understand when, you know, obviously everybody has to be persistent. You have to be persistent if you're working on a startup or you're doing any kind of any kind of business that 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 relies on on um, on the kind of stamina of the uh, you know of a couple people, but um, but really you know no, failing quickly. So what it comes down to is failing fast. You know if you know, if something isn't working, it doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily mean that that 
you don't know what you're talking about doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that there's not a place for what you're building. It just means that there's something that you need to move on from. So it's being able to understand what that thing is. It doesn't have to be the whole product. It could just be an element of it. You know, there are a lot of successful companies out there that started out one way, um, focusing on one aspect of their product, and then they still even have that aspect. They, they still might have it, but they've really started to. Uh, they the the fact the fact they're successful was because they drilled into like some other element. So they failed. They kind of failed on one side, and if they had if they continued to focus on that one thing, they wouldn't be here. Um, so being able to understand, recognize what's not working and move on from it. That's great advice. Cause some people actually, they, they, they find something that they like so much and then they want to try to make it work. And even though if it's not working, they will still stick with it because it's something that they like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not willing to accept that they need to change it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's really a, a really good. I mean, look, advice. we, you know, we're, we're, what we're doing isn't, it's not, it's not the sexiest, you know, startup out there and, frankly, you know, like we're not, you know, it's not robotics right now. There's no AI involved. So if we had wanted to do something that, that, that sounded cool when you're like a dinner party, then, and you know, that's, that's probably where we would have gone, but it, it's really discovering what's necessary and, um, and focusing on that and moving on from the stuff that's not working. It may not be the sexiest, but it's something you're passionate about. So it's something that makes you happy and it's something that actually I think is useful. So yeah. Yeah, it's something like that in itself. Exactly. Yeah. How can people find you if they want to get a hold of you? If they have other questions or want to find out more? Sure. Um, our website is uh, clickit.com, and that's with a Q, Q L I C K E T dot com. Uh, and my email is John G at clickit.com. So, yeah, I'd be happy to um, be happy to, to talk to anybody who wants to learn more. Perfect. Thank you for your time today. It's been very interesting and very nice to find out about the, this kind of a network that's out there to, yeah. to help employees and employers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Cool. Well, Anthony, thanks so much for having me on. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time and would love to stay in touch. Awesome. Okay. Thank you again. Great. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Project Management for Small Business. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please leave a review if you like what you're listening to. Share this podcast with other friends and co-workers. And if you want to be a guest or if you have any questions, please send me an email at pmforsb at pavproconsulting.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.